Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Girl. Welcome to Real Agriculture's Canola School series. I'm Kara Oosterhouse. In this episode, I talked to Tyler West, who is a field crop entomologist with Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada in Saskatoon. Tyler and I talk about sweep net monitoring for aster leaf hoppers, the vector of aster yellows disease, as well as how to identify the leaf hoppers in your canola crop. Here I am standing in my beautiful midge susceptible wheat field. And over here, I've got some barley. And I planted these early so that I could show you trap crops for aster yellows. So aster yellows is a phytoplasma disease, but it's vectored. That means it's carried by aster leafhoppers. That's the main vector here on the Western Canadian prairies. Now you might not know what an aster leafhopper looks like. They're very small and they tend to jump. And when you get them into a sweep bag, they kind of scuttle along sideways. And so, the only real way to find them in your crops is by using a sweep net. So there are no economic thresholds established for them, but we know that if they come into Western Canada infected, then they can start spreading aster yellows to plants right away. And so the aster leafhopper is primarily a pest in canola because canola is very susceptible to aster yellows infection. So you said it's susceptible to canola, but what other crops does it like to hang out in? So the aster leafhopper is migratory, so they don't overwinter very well at all here in our cold prairies. So if they do overwinter, it's in the egg stage. And so when they start to emerge, it's already too late. The crops past the stage where it can be infected by aster yellows. What we're really worried about are the southern winds that bring up uh, leaf hoppers from growing regions down in the US and Mexico where the plants just are continuously cropped and the leaf hoppers just keep on going and if they come up here infected that's when we start having troubles in our crops but it's really hard to pin it down so the aster yellows symptoms on your canola plant you really only see three to four weeks after that leaf hopper has been feeding on it so what you want to do is try to figure out, first of all, did those southern winds actually bring aster leafhoppers? And so what we're finding up on the Canadian prairies is that we have canola, we have issues in canola with aster yellows when the leafhoppers come up early and we have nice weather so they're not killed off. And so if they come up early, they're able to reproduce in places like where we're standing here, in barley fields, wheat fields, winter wheat. Um, in your ditch grasses and so if you want to know if you have aster leafhoppers you want to sweep your ditches and you want to sweep your wheat crops and your barley crops before your canola has even emerged from the ground and that'll give you an idea of whether or not you're at risk at all for aster yellows so no leafhoppers no aster yellows but you might catch a bunch of leafhoppers and unless you've got a molecular biology lab to identify whether they're infected you're not going to know what the actual aster yellows index is. And the index is the percentage of leafhoppers that are infected multiplied by the number of leafhoppers that you've got in your field. And so when you're sampling for them, you wanna use your sweep net and you wanna break it down by number of leafhoppers per sweep, but we really don't have any economic thresholds or anything worked out to know how many leafhoppers in your sweep bag. What does that equal in terms of, uh, of your risk for aster yellows? So, a lot of research still needs to be done in that area. So what sort of research have you done in that area? We've been looking at things like how many leaf hoppers that are infected does it take to infect a canola plant and a wheat plant and even camelina. Camelina is really susceptible to aster yellows. So some of that work we're doing, we've got a captive aster leaf hopper population. One's infected, one population is not infected so we can do experiments in the lab with infecting plants. Um, other things that I'm trying to do is just track the populations over time and understand when those leafhoppers arrive, are they arriving infected? And so we're working on molecular techniques, molecular tools to be able to tell if the leafhoppers are infected or not. So that's the missing piece of the scouting puzzle is, are your leafhoppers infected? How big of a problem are the leafhoppers with Astrogallo right now? It is really hit and miss. We're 
It's 2017 right now. We're kind of waiting for the next big leafhopper infestation with aster yellows, the next big aster yellow outbreak. The last one was in 2012. We had a lot of migrating leafhoppers and they came up infected. There was an infection rate of about 10%. So the kind of research that we do will allow us to pull these trends out of the data and be able to tell sort of what the year looks like, um, what the number of leafhoppers looks like, and try to piece together what the Astra Yellow's risk is in any given year. So do you have any indicators that there's another, uh, I guess, movement of Astra Yellow coming? Not yet. We're working on methods to try to predict the uh, leafhopper invasions, let's call them. Okay. Is there any parts of Western Canada that are really seeing leafhoppers right now? Or? Right where we're standing, actually. <laughs> and so we've been studying um, We've been sweeping for leafhoppers. We've got them down in Outlook, Saskatchewan. We've got them in Saskatoon. But just a little bit further north, we haven't found any leafhoppers. So um, they haven't arrived yet in those areas. So it really depends on where that wind brings them to.